Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to send and receive push notifications in the iOS simulator. And unlike some of the, I mean, as opposed to some of the documentation uh, available out there that push notifications don't work in the iOS simulator, they actually do. You can specify what type of push notifications your app receives and your application can also act upon them. And I'm going to show you in this video how to configure your application for exactly that purpose. So let me do some uh, reconfiguration on the screen here and let's go ahead and create a new Firebase application in here. So here we have terminal and I'm going to make it bigger and let's go ahead and say Flutter uh, create um, push uh, or my pushes, my push notification notifications. Okay. Um, and then let's say org se pixel t in here, which is my organization, for instance. And you should be able to specify your own organization in here. Okay. So CD my push notifications in here. And I'm going to bring up Visual Studio Code. So the first thing we're going to do in here is to find our bundle identifier. And that is with your organization, I type sepixality. So this is my entire bundle identif identifier, as you can see, application ID in here. And you can find it in different places inside your application. So let's go ahead and, um, and then the next thing that we have to do in here is to configure uh, a Firebase with Flutterfire CLI. And you need to install Flutterfire CLI because we're not going to manually do the Firebase installation like we used to do many years ago, for instance, with uh, uh, on the web. Now we have a Flutterfire CLI that's going to take care of all of that for us. So let's go ahead in Terminal in here. Let me see if I can open up Terminal. And we're going to say Flutter fire conf configure configure like that okay so after doing that uh, it's going to say okay which project do i want to create i'm going to say create a new project and let's call this uh, my push notifications oh <laughs> it didn't really take the entire name it took like my push notificate uh and that's okay that's okay. This is just for testing. I mean, we don't really need to do all of this, but I thought to show you from the absolute beginning how we can set up our application. Okay. So let's take this SE Pixality. All right. And it says, okay, which uh, platforms? And I'm going to say Android and iOS. Um, I, okay. And it's going to now ask us what the bundle identifier is. As you can see, for Android, is SE Pixality my push notifications is not registered. And it's going to ask us for iOS. And I'm going to say, paste that bundle identifier in here. I couldn't paste it, so I'm just going to say, I actually think maybe there is a little bit of a problem with the terminal in Visual Studio Code, to be honest with you. It, should, it shouldn't do all this crazy stuff, like it, basically cutting the name of my project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here in, um, in an actual terminal in here. So I'm going to say CD, dev, projects, Flutter, and here our pro project is called my push notifications. Okay. So let's go in here and say Flutter Fire Configure uh, like this. All right. So hopefully we're going to have more um, luck with this one. So I'm going to say create a new project, as you can see in here. And let's just call it uh, Pixality Pushes. Okay. Something like this. And we should be able to then paste this entire bundle identifier in here. So I'm going to copy it. Let's see if we're going to have some luck in here with uh, the Android application, for instance. Let's configure our application, setting the Firebase project to Pixality Pushes. And it's kind of difficult to find like a good name for the projects, especially when I'm demoing something in here. So I'm just making things up, OK? I'm going to say iOS and Android. We don't need to configure for web. So let's go ahead and say iOS and Android. OK, registering new Firebase Android app. All right, it set up the Android apps uh, bundle identifier correctly. It's not able to do it for uh, iOS for some reason. So uh, I'm just going to go in here and say sepixality dot my push notifications, even though I can't see it. But I can see in here, it didn't really set it up. Uh, sepixality is not registered. So it's setting up really weirdly, like it's saying se.pixality is not registered, and that's kind of incorrect. That's not the app uh, bundle identifier. So let's go now to this configured, um, the configurations that it created for us. Um, let's see if you can find it. Um, it should have set it up in here for us. So let's see. 
Firebase options. So let's open it, Firebase options. Okay, and let's see how it set it up for us in here. Uh, app ID, API key, project ID, and storage bucket. All right, and the bun bundle identifier is kind of incorrect. We know about that, but uh, I don't think it's so important right now to actually care about that. And I, I, I've seen this error before, and the problem is actually with the Firebase version. So let's go to our pop spec YAML. And in here, I'm going to go in here and find the dependencies that we have in here. Let's see. Oh, we haven't even added uh, Firebase. So let's go ahead and add Firebase. So I'm going to go to Terminal. And I'm going to say uh, Flutter pub uh, add Firebase core. OK, we need that. And we also need Firebase messaging. So let's have a look at the Firebase version that was added in here. Uh, let's see, Firebase core. OK, that's quite fine, actually. And let's go ahead now for push notifications. We need um, uh, Firebase messaging, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. So let's go to Terminal. And I'm going to say uh, Flutter pop at Firebase messaging. OK. And then I'm going to bring up uh, the web browser in here because we have to set up our Firebase application. So I'm going to copy this code from here. And let's go to our main Dart file in here, main.dart. OK, and we have to make this async as you can see in here, like that. And we need to also import Firebase core so that all of that works. Default Firebase options as well needs to be imported, Firebase options like that. OK, and then let's go ahead and add uh, Firebase messaging. Uh, so package, uh, Firebase and messaging, like this. All right, and we have to find out how to set up Firebase messaging as well for our application. So uh, let's go ahead and say Firebase messaging uh, Flutter. OK, so right there. And let's go to their documentation here, see the documentation. And then there is a piece of code that we have to uh, run in our application to get messaging working. So I'm going to say cloud messaging right here. And uh, right there, we have Firebase message permissions here. This is the code that we need. All right, so let's copy this and paste it right after the initialization. And in here, we don't actually need to get the settings. OK, so now that is done, I'm going to say select device and iPhone simulator. And then I'm going to run the application on the iOS simulator. So let's see how this actually works, OK? Because remember, I mean, all of this Firebase stuff really isn't so important. It's just that we need to register for push notifications. That's all we're doing in here, OK? So even if the Firebase uh, configuration didn't go so well, that's still not that important. We're getting some problems with uh, Cocoa Pops, and that's OK. We're going to go to the iOS folder. I'm going to vim the pop file in here. Let's put the platform in here and say platform is 13. OK, save the file. I'm going to say pod install repo update. And I'm kind of glad that we're getting these errors because, yeah, this is part of development life. So you sometimes get these errors. So now pod install went fine. I'm going to close the terminal, and let's just run our application now and see what happens. While all of this is going on, we actually need to create a sample push notification so that we can test it in the simulator, OK? So what I'm going to do in here is in Visual Studio Code, if I can show you, is to create a new folder and a, sorry, a new file. Let's just call it pushes. And then I'm going to say push one JSON, all right? And what we need is a sample um, JSON-like push notification. So I'm going to say iOS uh, push payload. All right, let's search for it. And let's see if we can find a very simple payload in here, right there. That's it. You can see APS alerts, et cetera, et cetera. OK? So I think APS badge, yeah. So let's just copy this, because I think that is a very simple push notification that we can create. And let's put it in. Um, our JSON in here. So I'm going to close that, close that, push one. And we have an alert uh, title. And let's say uh, push title. Okay. And then let's say push subtitle. And then I'm going to say push body like this. Okay. Push body. And let's remove the category from here. And then there's no game ID. Let's make sure also there is no comma in here. So this becomes a valid JSON. It's very important that this is a valid JSON. Otherwise, it won't work. All right, so that's the creation of our sample um, push notification, which is called push1.json. All right, 
So our application is up and running now. Let's bring up the simulator. As you can see, it's asking to uh, register for a push notification. So I'm just going to say allow. And then what I'm going to do in here is to resize this, have the push notification, have the application right there. And what we're going to do then is to actually send a push notification to our application. And what we're going to do is to use XC run, which is kind of like NPX for node packages. If you're executing a, an executable node package, for instance, like TypeScript, you can say NPS TSC. Uh, NPX TSC and XCRUN finds also ex uh, iOS executables in the iOS SDK for you or Xcode executables. So, and then there's an executable called SimCTL, which is Sim uh, like iOS simulator controller, probably something like that. I'm making the CTL part up, but I think the same part is for simulator. So we're going to have to send the message now to this simulator. And for this, it's very important that you find your um, bundle identifier. So our application's bundle identifier is actually this, SE Pixality My Push Notifications. So what I'm going to do in here is to send a push notification to that bundle identifier. So let's send our app to the background. And let's say sim CTL and, um, sorry, um, XC run sim CTL, and then we're going to say push. And in here, when you say push, it's going to send a push notification to the uh, simulator, but it doesn't know which one. But you can all, always say boot it. And this boot it, it, you don't have to then identify the uh, simulator that it's running. You can just say boot it, and that means whatever um, simulator is at the moment running and boot it. Just pick that one. And then what you need to do is to specify your application uh, bundle identifier. So I pasted our application. And the last parameter is actually the path to the JSON. And we put it inside pushes, push one JSON. So let's send that. And you can see here's the push notification running right there. So we can test it again. And we can go to our push notification. Let's go to push one JSON. I'm going to say push title uh, one, and then put some two and then three in here, save it, and then send the push notification and you can see it appears here. So you can tap on it as well. So you can tap on this push notification. You can see it opens your application. And of course, you can also go and configure then your application to actually listen to like when the user taps on a push notification. But what, what I wanted to really demonstrate in this video is that you can send push notifications in iOS simulator and uh, basically receive them and the user being able to tap on those. So. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I know it's a short one. I talked also really fast. I just wanted to, I didn't want to drag on uh, on this video. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.